Hi, I'm Kevin DeSmet, and I'm a student at Learning Alias. And this is going to be a power video regarding a technique for the use of shell stitch. So I have a door mirror here, and right now I'm concerned at the continuity along this boundary, which is the upper portion of the blend. What I like to do in this case is go to the showroom shader and put it on double horizon and then toggle off the model and just roll the highlight across it. Now you can see it's a little chunky so that probably means I need to check out my shading tolerances. So first of all I could put this on accurate and it's still really bad. So for example even if I put the tolerance um, an order of magnitude tighter you can see it's gotten a bit better but I still have aliasing uh, for lack of a better term they're basically the gray background showing through and this this will not allow me to have a realistic depiction so even if I turn on limit edge length to something like 10 it doesn't really change it it's still really bad for example 1 it's still just as bad if I put it on point one, you will see it's now taking quite a while to regenerate the model, to tessellate the model, if you will. And once it's done, it's gotten a little bit better, but it's still pretty bad, especially down here. And let me turn the model back on. So the boundary is this green edge. So definitely along that boundary, uh, it's not able to tessellate it smoothly enough to have the two appear as if they join, which they do join. So I can put this in order of magnitude tighter. Again, it will take a little while to tessellate. There we go. It's almost completed. There we go. It's completed. Hasn't changed much of anything at all. What can we do to fix this? Well, there's an easy trick, and it involves shell stitch. So let me first put these tolerances to a reasonable level. They still need to be reasonable in order to get a realistic highlight profile. So I think uh, point zero zero one will be okay and I don't need limit edge length. This is more for planar surfaces. So what I'm gonna do is pretty easy. So first I'm gonna make sure to select all my surfaces and put them in the surfaces layer and then I will create a new layer. It doesn't really need to have a name and what I'm gonna do is pick nothing and go to stitch make sure keep originals is turned on so that we don't lose our originals and then just select these so let's say this group of surfaces and stitch and because this layer was selected it will be put on that layer I can hide the surfaces and reshade the model look at select nothing and now, because it's stitched, there's topology information. So alias knows along the boundary, it must meet up. And because it's stitched, it did meet up. So you can see now, let me turn the model back on. So the boundary is now this, you know, purple edge. Let me see if I can't make that white. There we go. So the boundary is now this white boundary. It's the same boundary as before, but because it's stitched, alias knows that they're supposed to be connected and now we can really look at the highlights and it looks really good here see I have to temporarily turn the model on and off to even know where the edge is to even know where the boundary even starts so that's great so that's towards the bottom of the of the door mirror let's look at the top portion Ooh, see we can see right here there is a bit of an uh, a crease and double horizon just rolling the black band across your model you can see these creases pop up or not pop up so okay maybe there's a little something we could change there now it is important to note on a shell you cannot perform evaluation because it is stitched so what I want to do is I just want to go back to surfaces and hide the layer that the shells on and I'm just going to work with the surfaces and I'm going to put on a curvature continuity surface continuity locator and it's curvature it's curvature it's curvature well okay so that little crease we saw was within our tolerance but I'm still interested so it looked pretty good near the front so I'm gonna pick this one 
and it looked pretty bad near the top, which is that one. And I'm going to go into the information window. And the first locator we picked will be on top, and the second locator is the second one. So it, it, it respects the order in which you did the selection. So the good one here, the bottom, where we didn't see any crease whatsoever, you can see the minimum and the maximum tolerances. And in gray here are the tolerances that we're shooting for. So you can see it's actually very good. On the second one, this one, you can see that the angle, while it is within tolerance of 0 0.1, it's not, it's not a whole lot within tolerance. It, there's still a bit of an angle deviation. And you can see that with the double horizon shader. So this gives us very valuable information to work from. So now we can continue to work on the model. And the shell that we've got here, we can delete it. doesn't matter. It has proved our purpose well. And whenever we want to evaluate it again, we can very easily uh, make a new shell and just continue on with, with, with our analysis and with our modeling. So this has been a power video on the stitch control and a technique as to rolling a double horizon highlight when the boundaries of your model are so small that the shader cannot properly tessellate them. I've been Kevin Asmet, a student at Learning Alias.